Good day dear chess lovers, Soren here and in today's video I want to share with you an interesting attacking game played by Danish chess grandmaster Bent Larsen. Larsen's opponent is Dutch chess international master Theo Daniel van Scheltinga. This game is from 1964 huge wins tournament. Larsen had white pieces and he opened up with f4, birds opening. An opening which can be seen pretty often in Larsen's repertoire. With this move, usually grandmasters are trying to surprise their opponents and drag him out of opening preparations. Knight f6, knight f3, d5, e3, g6. Black R is to think it to the kingside bishop as soon as possible. Otherwise, when it's white who is think it to the queenside bishop, it usually creates too many problems for black. That's why having a counterbalance on g7 is really a good idea from black's side. b6, a4, bishop b7, queen e1. Okay, this is a standard manu maneuver in birds opening. From e1 you are switching your queen into the attack. Then it jumps on uh, h4, c5, knight bd2, knight c6. Well, uh, knight g4 won't give you anything. White can just play bishop d1. In the game after knight bd2 we have knight c6 and queen h4. e6, rook f2, uh, knight b4, bishop d1. Oh, sorry, uh, we have a knight d1 by Larsen. Knight goes back on e8, offering an exchange of queens, but white is rejecting. Yeah, against weaker opponent, Larsen wants to uh, keep the queens on the board and he goes for an attack. This time we have g4. F5. Uh, with his counter strike, Black is like stopping White's attack. G takes F5, E takes F5. Otherwise, it could get out of control, you know. Knight D F3, Knight F7. Uh, we can see that Black is doing pretty well and there are no issues in Black's camp. D4, Knight A5, Bishop D1, c4, knight e5, and an exchange on e5 followed. All in all, we have an equality on the board. Maybe white has a slight initiative, but uh, black is holding, black is just doing great, no problem at all. Moreover, still white needs to solve the development of this bishop. Let's see how is white going to switch that bishop into the game. Meanwhile, first, Larsen wants to activate his knight. Rook f4. Okay, from f4 the rook can be switched into the attack by putting it on h4. Queen goes back on e7, bishop d2, bishop a6, uh, just a perfect diagonal for the light squared bishop, rook h4 and g5. A very accurate move, Black is giving up the pawn on h7. Uh, if you play h6 then you are weakening the g6 square, knight f4 can... Uh, create problems for black, that's why black played g5 offering the pawn. Bishop e2, now bishop g4 can be a threat, right? Although to bishop g4 at the moment you can answer with uh, queen h6. And it was in here that Larsen decided to fish in troubled waters and he played c4. Uh, after which uh, black made a mistake and played bishop takes c4, but yeah, this is a serious mistake. Black could just recapture on c4 with the pawn. If king f2, then bishop g4. If here, then just queen f7. Okay, you can go for an exchange on g7 and then try to rely on your pawns, but it's not that you have an advantage, we have an equality on the board. Instead, after c4, we have bishop takes c4, a serious mistake, and now let's see what's the problem with it. So we reached the critical position where the task is to find the winning line for white. Ready? Here we go. The logical continuation of the tricky c4 move. Knight f4 is on the board. Knight g6 can be now a threat also. Knight h5. All black could do was to accept the peace sacrifice and there comes king f2 touch of a master you know this time white is freeing the g1 square for the rook now can you understand the idea hidden behind that knight sacrifice by sacrificing a piece then putting the king on f2 white managed to free the g file for the queen side rook once it joins the attack the rest becomes matter of technique uh, 
But uh, before proceeding with the game, let's see what's the difference of going for knight f4 straight away. What if, uh, for example, after c4 you recapture with the d pawn? Or okay, what if you go for knight f4 straight away? Then the whole point is that in here, after g takes f4, king f2, this bishop is on e2 and it can successfully block the g file. That's why it was a key mistake of moving away the bishop from d1 h5 diagonal. That was a very bad idea and now black will pay a high price for it. f takes e3 check bishop takes e3 f4 bishop d2. Just no way out black king is in danger. King e6 queen g4 check resignation followed. If king f7, then queen takes g7, this is simple, and if rook f5, then after a few more moves, white again can finish up his opponent. Yeah, this is a desperate attempt. Then rook e1 is coming. And then check, bishop b4 check, and finally white is announcing a checkmate. That's why understanding that it's over after queen g4 resignation followed. So this is it, dear chess lovers. Hope that you enjoyed the game. Uh, actually, uh, Van Scheltinka was also low on time. Probably that was also one of the reasons that he panicked and made that catastrophic bishop c4 move. But all in all, yeah, this final combination was great after bishop c4, knight f4 followed by king f2 is really a great idea and hope that you enjoyed it. Feel free to share this game with your friends as well. And in the end, a chess puzzle where the task is to find the mating line for white. There is a forced mating theory and as usual, we'll wait for your answer in the comment section. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in my next video.